Over the next few minutes, we're going to use simple prompts from the Lore Masters deck to create a web of interconnected lore that could be added to an existing setting or used to create an entirely new setting from scratch. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Peter Tchaikovsky, creator of the Story Engine deck and the Lore Masters deck, and today we're going to do a little demo using an alpha copy of the Lore Masters deck to create a lore web. Lore Masters deck features eight types of double-sided cards that you can use to create lore webs. We have cards for factions, figures, events, locations, objects, materials, creatures, and then wildcard aspects, which can be used to describe any other kind of card. You start prompt by drawing any kind of card type, usually a faction. For your first card, you're going to draw using the colored side or primary side of the card. Each card has four suggestions called cues that you can choose from when building your lore. Read the cues and rotate and place the cards so that the cue you want is facing you. I'm going to choose a battalion. Next, we're going to draw some more faction cards, this time using the light or secondary side to add details to our main prompt. I'm going to say prone to infighting. And then we'll just continue drawing secondary cards until all sides of our primary card have a card tucked under them. Built or settled a location, prevent a tragedy from reoccurring, excellent discipline within their ranks, reputation for causing interference. I'm going to go with built or settled a location. And in particular, this is interesting because you can see there is an icon for another card type. That's the location card icon, which means that this card is going to link to a location card. To do that, we tuck it in place and then draw a location card immediately using one of the primary cues to fill it in. I like the idea that this battalion has a base in a grotto. Known for charitable work, betrayed or was betrayed by a faction, their agenda is to make a resource publicly accessible, or their trait is that they frequently work out of a certain kind of location. I'm going to say that they're working on making a resource publicly accessible. And that resource is a pigment, a crystal, foam, or milk. I'm going to go with a pigment, and I think it's something where this battalion is trying to make whatever their colors are, whatever is sort of their representative or symbolic color, they're trying to make that available to people to show their allegiance. And for our final cue, they're linked to an embarrassing scandal, they're trying to defeat another faction, or they're seen as having in-group social status, Ooh, or staunch traditionalists. I think I'm going to say this battalion has our staunch traditionalists. Now that we've finished this initial seed prompt for our web of lore, we can expand any of the primary cards that we currently have tucked. In this case, I want to expand on the grotto. Now, whenever you're expanding into a new lore prompt, you're going to start by drawing a wild card. Wild cards have two secondary sides and no primary side. You're going to choose from any of those eight cues to describe the lore prompt you've just expanded. Tuck this card between the primary card and the card it expanded from. The arrows on the wild card will help you map the connections between your lore prompts so that you can see where your web started and how it expanded. And once your wild card is in place, you'll start to draw more secondary cards matching the type of the primary card that you're describing. Here, the grotto can have a celebrity animal or plant. It can be a temporary faction headquarters, prone to flooding, ooh, that would be interesting, or impressive lighting or signage. Ooh, you know, I really like the celebrity animal or plant, but I also really like prone to flooding. I'm gonna go with prone to flooding. I'll draw my next one. It has a unique subspecies of creature, site of lasting trauma for a figure, home to a gang or gangs, or seasonal fluctuations in population. Ooh. I think I'm going to go with site of lasting trauma for a figure. And who that figure is? A designer, a socialist, a soldier, or an arcanist. Ooh, I'm going to go with arcanist responsible for the death of its founder, full of music or murals, impressive gate or door, the option for it to be made from another material, and prized spring or water source. I'm going to go with impressive gate or door. I like the idea that the grotto has a massive set of gates. I think I will pull a optional secondary prompt to see what those gates are made out of. I'm drawing a material card. It can be made from a nut material, fabric, 
quartz or graphite. Ooh, a giant set of quartz gates fits perfectly here. Now, with the Loremasters deck, some of the connection points between cards are a little more specific and less general the way that the original Story Engine deck worked. So occasionally, if you pull a card, um, you may find, oh, that's not quite a fit, in which case you can pull another. And some cards, specifically, will show you two icons saying that you should draw two and pick the best option um, if you want to, just to give you a better way of making sure that your cards are speaking to each other in a way that feels coherent to your story. And that completes our second prompt. Now I'm going to expand the Arcanist. This Arcanist is... I'm going to go with Desperate. And again, I'm going to orient the wild card so that it points from the card that it's connected to um, to the new prompt. They can be forgetful. They have an unacknowledged child or heir. Their agenda is to survive an event, or they have a very intense gaze. Ooh, I like forgetful and I like intense gaze. So I might actually do a little trick where you tuck on a corner like this, and you can actually use both traits. When you do that, when you claim two at the same time, it just means that uh, you draw one less card for completing the prompt. They betrayed another figure. They are petitioning a faction for help. They're kind of a pushover, or they're a creative or divergent thinker. I am going to say that they betrayed another figure, and I think this probably happened in that grotto. And um, we're starting to see some connection points here, and we're gonna figure out who they betrayed. A believer, a sailor, an artificer, or a driver or rider. I think an arcanist and an artificer going head to head would be a lot of fun. There being sort of conflicting technologies or conflicting systems of expertise, I think would be a really interesting uh, contrast. So I'm gonna go ahead with artificer. We're gonna draw them a wild card. Gelatinous, parasitic, climactic, unnerving, monochromatic, statuesque, trustworthy, or slippery. Ooh, so if they betrayed someone trustworthy, that would make it particularly egregious betrayal. I like that that raises the stakes. It can also be parasitic, like maybe they were leeching off of the Arcanist and that's why they were betrayed. I'm gonna go with parasitic for now. But the nice thing is that any of these cards, anytime you can rotate and change. If later on I decided that because we're in a grotto and we're near the ocean, I wanted this um, Arcanist to have betrayed a sailor, I just rotate that card and I can keep on going on with my prompt. So don't feel like you get locked in when you make these choices. This person disappeared for years. They're trying to bring about an event. They have a notable pet, or they're always in a rush. Ooh, I like a lot of these. I'm gonna say they have a notable pet and they're always in a rush. And their notable pet is a mastodon, a dog, a beetle, or a jelly, like a jellyfish. Ooh, so a lot of the creature cards have aquatic species, which uh, don't fit with every prompt. That's why there's always just one of them as an option. But I really like the idea that because of an artificer, they've created like a mobile fish tank that allows this jellyfish to move around and accompany them. Uh, so I'm gonna go with jelly, because I think that's a lot of fun as flavor for the artificer, especially an artificer who um, lives near the ocean or it has some connection to this grotto near the ocean. They avoid high pressure situations. They have denounced a former ally. They are trying to revive a defunct faction, or they are cowardly or shrewd. I definitely think they're trying to revive a defunct faction. And the betrayal may have been the Arcanist, who's a member of the Battalion, which is prone to infighting, having this falling out with the Artificer, who maybe wants to start their own faction or revive another dead faction that's closer to their vision for the world. So what faction is that going to be? A siblinghood? a crew, a conspiracy, or a corporation. I am definitely going with conspiracy for this. Like a conspiracy within the battalion, like rumors of a, a shadow battalion within their ranks uh, working against them or working to a different purpose is a ton of fun. And I'm gonna just immediately expand that one. And you probably have noticed that I am strategically tucking cards so that cards that I'm pretty sure I'm going to expand on end up on the side of the card that has free space. It's just always good strategy when you're using the space on your table to leave yourself space to expand in the areas where you think that expansion is going to be most interesting. So here we go. Wild card. Flaky, venerable, demanding, redeeming, odorous, artistic, utopian, or sturdy. I am definitely going with a utopian conspiracy. They are connected to a creation story, this utopian conspiracy. They want to control the illicit trade of a material. Their trait is that they have a uniform or equipment that includes an object, or they believe in communist principles. I'm definitely going to go with object or uniform. They ousted a former leader. They're trying to help those left behind by an institution. They have good outreach programs, or they're highly corrupted or corruptible. Oh, I think any good utopian conspiracy uh, needs to be corrupted or corruptible. 
Oh, and uh, sometimes I forget to immediately draw the thing to fill in a secondary prompt link. You may just find that your preference is to fill them in after you've finished drawing all the cues. You really can go with either option. So our equipment is a spear, a case, sandals, or an automobile. I'm thinking spear is a good fit for this one. That our little battalion, conspiracy battalion, has a spear as their weapon, or a particular kind of spear that they know how to use, or that they recognize maybe carvings that, that are very subtle carvings that they add to their spear so they can identify each other within the larger battalion. And finally, lost control of their former headquarters. Ooh, worship an animal deity. Oh, I like that too. Known for cooking or crafting with a material. Their trait is bureaucratic principles. I am so tempted by the animal deity, but I'm really, really interested in them having lost control of their former headquarters, and I'm not going to draw and tuck another card to fill that in, because I am choosing to interpret that headquarters as the grotto. Maybe these used to be separate um, factions, maybe the, this sort of cons utopian conspiracy within the battalion used to be more above ground, and eventually there was, due to infighting, uh, some kind of leadership dispute or mission dispute, and they ended up uh, in contention with each other instead, the main battalion won the grotto, and this conspiracy is still staying alive within the battalion, possibly seeking to uh, come up with a plan to reclaim it. We had literally nothing on this table a few minutes ago, and now we have an entire web coming together. Well, let's learn more about the spear of this conspiracy. Oh my gosh, I just got that. <laughs> Putting the spear in conspiracy, beautiful. A wild card, frail, religious, spellbinding, intricate, grotesque, severe, smelting, or insulating go with spellbinding here. Uh, it has a background and that its powers have been dormant for years, these spheres. Um, background that they were created at the same time as a location. Oh, if there's a limited number of these spheres that have spells hidden inside them and they're created at the same time as the grotto, that could be really cool. The spheres affect metabolism in some way, or the spear is a two-in-one with another type of object, like there's another type of purpose to it or object hidden inside it. I think I'm gonna go with created at the same time as the grotto, and I'm gonna even little one-up this. Because we already have a cool connection between the grotto and the quartz here, I'm gonna say that um, the spearheads are made of that same quartz, and there's a limited number of them. And in fact, the spellbinding might be an enchantment to hide the quartz heads so that people who bear these spears can um, hide within the battalion without being noticed. The object was destroyed as a result of a crisis, standard issue within a faction, a symbol of authority, or contains a pocket dimension. I am going to say that it was destroyed with, uh, as a result of a crisis. I'm going to draw another crisis card, but I'm probably going to choose to interpret this as whatever the falling out between the two factions was, whatever that infighting falling out was, that was the crisis where a lot of those spears were destroyed as they tried to eradicate this faction, but a few survived and are still in use by this utopian shadow conspiracy faction within um, the battalion. So our event could be... And we can draw two cards here, and I think I might. A victory, a famine, a crisis, a vortex, a betrayal, well, that fits, a descent, a hunt, or a deluge. Um, I like the idea that the Arcanist led a hunt to get rid of all of the artificers from within the faction. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna say this artificer escaped because in that they're like, you know, perhaps conducting their plans from hiding. But I like, I like the idea that it was a hunt. It makes it a little, makes, raises the stakes a little bit, basically. Lastly, the spear could be decorated using a creature's remains. Ooh, that's really fun. Given as a gift to a faction, telepathic or telekinetic properties, or ornate appearance. I'm gonna go with telepathic or telekinetic properties. Um, I wanna say that these quartz spears um, allow bearers of other spears to, to speak to each other telepathically, so that uh, it's a way that this conspiracy can stay in communication while, you know, sort of in hiding in this in the semi-public space. Um, and that is a complete prompt. And of course, we could choose to expand further, including the hunt, the nature of the quartz, we could learn about the jelly, or about the pigment. You can continue building and expanding for as long as you want to. And once you're done, you can either record notes on your overall web of lore, you can write down individual notes on each node in it, or you can just take a picture to save it for later. And that is the basic function of the Lore Masters deck. Now we are planning to release a video series showcasing some of the more advanced game modes of this deck. You'll be able to build timelines, you can stress test your world with a series of cataclysms, um, you can create more complex and in-depth prompts that explore one element in greater detail, you can create hybrid prompts, and of course you can find ways to combine Story Engine deck and Deck of Worlds to add additional elements to your lore webs. So follow the Story Engine deck on YouTube, and you can follow our socials at Story Engine deck to see new demos coming down the pipeline, and I hope you have a chance to check out the Lore Masters deck at storyenginedeck.com slash lore.